here. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our ACEWARE webinar on the topic of supplemental data capture pages. We have a great audience here today. I was taking a look, Cheryl, and of the ACEWEB users we have registered for the webinar, you have about half of them that have used supplemental data pages in the past, and about the other half is just curious about them, and they've never tried these supplemental data pages. So Cheryl is our residential ACEWEB expert. I'm sure everybody's interacted with Cheryl in some way, and she has provided three-hour hands-on sessions on this very topic, but we did not block off three hours of your time today. So she's going to condense that, give us about 30 minutes of a general overview of ACEWEB supplemental data pages, and then at the end she'll answer the questions you may have. So with that, Cheryl, I'm going to turn things over to you, and you are all yours. Okay, well, thank you. All right, we're going to talk about supplemental data capture pages today, basically what, why, how, where, and when. Um, we're going to talk about what are supplemental data captures, why would I use one, how do I create it, where does it go, and when does the user see that. Let's start. Okay, what is a supplemental data capture page? It is a page that you're going to use to collect additional name and registration data when someone enrolls in one of your courses. That data can be specific to a single course or possibly a group of courses. For instance, you have a series of youth camps where you need to collect something like a, a roommate preference. Um, and then you can also use it to do additional data that you don't normally collect on the sign-up page, and this would be the, your um, sign-up that, that creates a name record page. Okay, why would I use one? Over on the right, you see that I have just an example of a customer uh, sign-up page with their personal information. It's, in, it's got fields on it. You can see the, any of them that are starred are required but then they have extra fields that the user can enter data in or they don't have to. For example, middle initial firm, cell phone, birth date, and gender are all um, optional fields. They, the, normally you would collect first and last name, address, city, state, and zip, maybe a day phone and stuff. Now, you would not normally on this page required data that you don't need for everyone. Generally, we, we require first and last name and some kind of an address and some kind of a phone and an email address for everybody that signs up via the web. But we don't need necessarily a cell phone or a birth date or gender or even a firm from all of our users, so those are optional fields here. They can fill out the required ones move on, create the name record, and go and do whatever they need. Now, if you want to enter data, there's two places. This is the, the uh, images I've got up here are the green screen registration records. If you need for a specific course to be able to store data in one of those fields I have here on the highlighted in yellow, on the left image, the status, t-shirt, and miscellaneous code. Or if you want to store data here on this additional info tab, any of the character type, logical type, data type, numeric type fields. If you want to use those to store data when somebody enrolls in a course, then you must use a supplemental data capture to do that page to do that because that's the only way you can get additional data. You can't put them on a sign-up page because if they sign up, well, all it's doing is creating a name record. It's not creating a registration record in a course. The other option is, like we already talked about, if you need to require name data for a specific course, you've got a some kind of a youth camp that you're offering, and you've got to create a collect birth date and gender for that particular course, but you're not needing it for the other courses, so you don't want to require it on your sign-up page. 
Okay, how do I create one? So once you figure out the fields that you're going to use to collect additional data, you are going to create an HTML template with the data on it, the HTML fields that you want to collect for. Um, now I warn you, you're going to need some HTML experience to, to do it, to add those fields and things. Um, so it's not always for the faint of heart to create one. And this, we, we just don't have enough time to go through the details of creating one, but there is a help topic. It's called Supplemental Data Capture Page. And you can see down at the bottom in that image at the bottom that there's five sections that tell you how to create it, how to associate it with a course, how to add and edit fields, how to require fields on it. There's even an option on appending data to the comments field and things. And those will go, those sections, you expand them and they'll go through details on how to, to create your templates. Now once you create your template, it has to go in a specific place. It's got to go, when you're in your ACE web installation, you're going to have a folder called WConnect, and within it, you're going to have an ACE folder, and within it, you're going to have a custom folder. And that's where any of your custom templates go, your supplemental data capture or any kind of custom template that you're using. So you are going to need access to that folder to put templates in it or to get in and edit existing templates. Now, a word about that. 90% of you have Student Manager and AceWeb on your own institution server somewhere. We as AceWare don't have rights to give you access to that folder. That is something your own IT staff are going to have to do. For the few of you that are, are where we're hosting your servers, that's something your own AceWare technician can do, but most of you don't do that. Um, so you will have to contact your IT staff to get access. And, one of, and, our, and our recommendation has always been you have at least one designated staff member that has access to that whole WConnect folder um, because that's where ASOC templates are stored, your scripts, are, uh, JavaScripts are stored, your style sheet, images. If you wanted a place where you're linking a bunch of PDF pipe files on your website, you could have a folder in there where you put your PDF, and we we've always recommended somebody has access in your one of your staff member has access to that folder to be able to do that. Okay, now once you've created your template and you put it in the right place, and you've set it up for the course, this is there's two options of how that the user this is the person that's going to enroll in this course is going to see that data. There is an INI setting, an ASWEB INI setting called ECDC. It stands for Enrollment Cart Data Capture setting in the ASWEB INI. If you turn it on, then when they add the course to their cart and they get to the actual cart page, it's going to be on that page as well. So you can see here I've got course options registration fee, my optional fees, and then I've got this section in yellow that I've highlighted. That's my additional data that's coming from that supplemental data capture page I created. So it shows right there. They can pick what they need and they can move on to proceed to checkout or, or save a cart to cart and add another course if they're enrolling in more than one. The second thing about that is that it's really easy on that page. If one of them is required, they can't get past the page until they, they enter required data. And you can see down here where my little green arrow is. There's just an example. T-shirt in this example is required. Well, I didn't fill anything out, and I clicked proceed to checkout. And you can see it highlights it in red, and it says this field is required. So it doesn't let you pass that until they fill out required fields, and then it lets them move on. So that's option one. Option two is, if you have that setting to off, 
So they're going to get the cart page where they're picking those fees, and then they're going to click proceed to checkout or save to cart, whatever which one the button they pick. They're going to get a separate page with those fields. And you can see now I have a separate page with those two fields on there. So they're going to fill out that data and hit submit, and then they'll move on to either add the second course or if they're going to go ahead and pay, that's the only one that they're enrolling in. It's a little bit easier for the user. They're not having to go to a second page. Now, the second thing about this particular INI setting, when you set an INI setting, it's either off for everything or it's on for everything. So you're not going to be able to pick and choose. And so either you're always going to have it on a separate page or it's always going to show that on the cart page, one or the other. Okay, this is an example page that just has several different options you can use on a, a, a supplemental data capture page. You can see I have gender and birth date, and if you notice, they are both already filled out. Because when you put name fields on your supplemental data ca capture page, you can set it up to where if I filled those out previously, it'll go ahead and show me that data and I don't have to refill it out every single time, which is really useful for like a parent or, or an, a, a contact person for a firm. They're enrolling proxy people and they're enrolling multiple people where you don't have to fit, and it's already there. They don't have to keep filling that data out. The rest of this is all most of this is all named. The t-shirt size is this. That's an example of a drop down where they're going to click the right arrow on the side and they're going to pick a size. They're not going to pan type in. But now parent name and grade are where they actually have to enter something. Now those are also required in this particular example. Um, policy is just some kind of a checkbox where they can check it and say, you know, I, I mean, I have a policy example here. You could use checkboxes for other things, but, um, and then the next one now, the levels one is a special thing that you can do. Those are actually interest codes. So if they check the boxes that I've previously attended level one and level two, when this is, is submitted, it's actually going to add level one interest code and level two interest code to my interest codes on my name record so that you can track that kind of thing with them. Um, just one note, if you do decide to do that kind of thing, you would want to, uh, well, you must make sure that you've got actually level one, level two, and level three interest codes created in your interest code list. If you don't have them, you want, they'll be in the data, you just won't see them on the screen. So be sure you do that. And then the last ones are those two medical restrictions and food allergies. Now those are special fields that what they're doing is you're filling them out and they're, um, these are more like essay type things. I mean, I don't have, I put no restrictions on allergic to peanuts, but I mean, I could write a whole paragraph if I needed to. And when, I, when they submit, down here on the name, on my name record, in my comments history tab, my comments field, it's going to add. It'll show the label, and then it'll show what I put into those fields. And you can do multiple options for that, and it just appends the data to that comments tab. So if you need exam, uh, some types of things where Maybe you have a couple of essay type questions that you need to have somebody fill out. This is the type of option that you're going to use for that kind of question. 
and it just gets dumped into that comments history field, and then you can pull it out later for a report. Thanks. Okay. Now, customization. The the temp I mean the help topic tells you how to make basics of how to do some of those examples that I just showed you. The help topic will tell you how to do. But say you need some kind of a custom option. Um, an example would be you want field number two to show up only if they selected a certain option in field number one. That would be considered a custom option. Um, that kind of thing, if that's the kind of thing you need, what you do is you're going to submit a request to your ACEWARE technician. If Michael is your technician, you're going to submit it to him. He's going to work with you on, on your specific needs. If it's something that we already, you know, we, we can do for you, he'll help you get it set up and things. But if, it, if, if it's considered custom work that's chargeable, and, they, and we do get requests where they want something special and, it, and that's considered custom chargeable work, they're going to send it off to the right people, to the right programmers and things, and they're going to get you a quote for that custom work and stuff. Okay, now, reporting data. We don't have the ability to go through the specifics on this, but I want you to know that these are possible. You can add any of this additional data you're collecting, you can add it to a, a roster report. Usually people make a custom roster report for it, but you add all those fields. Any of the fields that you're collecting data in, you can add to your roster report to print out and hand off to people or, or p make a PDF and email it to someone or anything. Additional data can also be added to ACEWEB confirmation emails and staff transaction notices. So when I enroll in this class and I fill out all this additional data, you can have it on the, the ACEWEB email template it uses. You can have that additional field data there, so it also sends it to me in my email if you, need, if you wanted to. Not everybody likes doing that, but it is an option that you can do. The third one is you can create a custom roster for your instructor that has this additional info. So they're going to log in as instructor, they're pulling up that course, um, clicking the course link to get that roster. You can have the extra data there for them to be able to view and also export into their own Excel spreadsheet if you wanted to. An example of that might be you're, uh, you're, you're going to give out t-shirts, the instructor is actually the one that's going to do it, so you want them to be able to print out a list for sizes where they can print that out and get it so the day that they're handing it out, they can they know what size everybody's ordered. Okay. That is the basics of what you use a supplemental data capture for, when and why. Um, so Sharon, if we have questions, I am ready for questions. Okay, Cheryl, we don't we don't have a lot. John has asked if it's possible to do more than one supplemental data page for a course. Um, he gave an example of needing to collect age and gender perhaps on one page and sign a waiver of, on another. Not, there's only one, you can only have one per course, so you would need to put all of that data onto one template thing, so you don't get a chance to have two. Okay. Other questions? I see some activity here. Let's see. No, nope. no other questions from the audience. You have a few more times just absorbing all this, I think. Well, and this is a a lot of times you have to think about your needs before you can decide what you want. Now, on the waiver thing, it, you, there is a way that, you know when you get to the payment page where they've added all their courses to the cart, they've clicked proceed to checkout, and now they're, 
depending on how you're going to let them pay, whether they get to invoice or they have to pay by credit card, you know, they're going to pick an option. There is a way to add waiver type stuff there where they have to click a button, I mean, a, a check a box or something before they something can move says on we, to the next step. We agree to, we agree. by signing this or by registering, we agree this and this and this and this, and they need to check that yeah. box before closing. It's a lot, of either a disclaimer or possibly we agree to the refund policy, that kind of thing. Now, with that option, though, that's across the board. So it's, it's, it's one of those that it's the same. You enable that every class that you use, they still have that check. I agree to your refund policy or, or whatever, disclaimer, whatever it is you're going to use it for. So that might, it would depend on what John needed, whether we would go with that kind of option. But that is another option that's not actually a supplemental data capture page, but it does allow you to do that kind of thing with waivers and things. Okay, we have another question here. They wanting to know, how do you make something a required area um, in these supplemental data fields? Well, and that and the house will go through and tell you how to do that. Generally, you're going to put a required class, a style class, on every field that you're going to want to require, which tells the system, wait a minute, this is required. You didn't fill it out. Now I'm going to make you fill it out before you move on kind of thing. There is ways, there are ways to do that, so. Amy would like to know if there are limitations to the amount of information that can be captured in these pages. No. Anything that's in the name record, name UDF you can use, register and reg UDF, register UDF, and those are the ones, that, when I say UDF, I'm talking about the ones that show on the additional info tab on the name or registration records. Any of those fields you can cat use to capture data, I mean, you can use a supplemental data, <laughs> sorry, I'm tripping over my tongue. You can use a supplemental data capture page to collect data for those fields. Other questions from the group here? Doesn't look like it. As always, if you if you think of a question um, after the webinar, send it my way, and we'll get that answered. Sometimes it's not until you sit down and start to work <laughs> on things that these ideas come to you. I know. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah, five minutes after we shut down, somebody will have a question. Yeah, probably so, and that, and that's fine. We're we're going to take yeah. questions afterwards. That's not um, a problem. Send them to Sharon, and she'll forward anything to me that we need. Okay, I have a question here. This is Kathy from from uh, Johns Hopkins and Ollie program. Okay. Um, if they're a new member right now, a field on their demo two tab called like member sense. Um, how do we capture some of this with supplemental data? They need a way to get um, a member from the web. Member sense well, a specific date. They have a field on the. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna get out of my PowerPoint for a minute here. She says they have a field on their demo two tab called Member Sense, and they enter like fall 2014 or spring 2016, etc. Can this so be done? So one of these fields, maybe Member Number, is the one she's using that for. Yes, you can. As long as you realize that you're now relying on the customer to tell you how long they've been a member. And that would be, I mean, I could say, well, I've been a member since 1990, but do I have any proof that I've actually been a member that long? But yes, those are fields. Any of these fields on them, any of these additional fields on main, the demographics, the additional info, there, there's even a way that you can store data in one credential record if you just feel like you need extra data through a supplemental data capture page. And then also the ability to append data into that comments field there on the left side.
Okay. Um, is there a way to save a PDF from a supplemental data page? No. Somewhere on ACEWeb, the signed copy of a waiver? Okay. No, I'm sorry. There's no. Now, there is a way to append data for a person online. Um, let me get into my. Log on. Let me log in here. And so, well, it would help if I actually put my credentials in the field now, wouldn't it? Let's try that. All right. So there is a page called attachments. You could put a link to it on that account page. Now I can supplemental and I click upload file and I have that. Now when I go, it stores it in student manager. So my student manager folder is here. I have a folder called name docs. And then it's it's going to store it by, it has to give it a unique value so it stores the name ID as the name of the folder. And then once I get in there, there's my page I just uploaded. And you have that ability, but you don't have that ability as part of a supplemental data capture page. Cheryl Joy is asking a two-part question. First of all, she wants okay. to know how you set up a custom roster for the instructors and how you set up the, um, for instructors, that's it. She was correcting herself in an area. That's in help and you'll probably want to discuss it with your um, technician, uh, instructor access, custom roster. Basically what you're doing is you're putting, you're going to put something like this into the course field. You're going to come to the course, you're going to go to the ASWIB info tab, and this field down here. I didn't copy that, so let's just pretend like we're doing it. And here's where I'm going to put my field list. Actually. I already have an example there, so we just do this. Now, when the when the customer, once I save this, when the instructor logs in to view this roster, they're going to see the name, phones, email, and the t-shirt size is what they would see when they got into their roster for this particular course. This is something that you'll want to discuss with your technician about what it is you need because there's also an option where you're putting this at the beginning now what it does is th there's a INI setting called roster fields where you set what the defaults and what you want the instructor to see for rosters it's going to show those fields plus the t-shirt field. And so this is something that you'll want to discuss with your tech, but that's the that's the basics of how you do it. Very good. Oh, I God. am scrolling through to make sure I haven't missed anything. Okay. Cheryl, I'm not seeing any other questions. Kind of give that just a little bit more time here in case there's last minute thoughts. And do well, follow and up with me if you like. Go ahead, Cheryl. I was just going to say we didn't talk about how you associate it with the course. Once you create your data capture page, you come into that ACE Web Info and whatever you named it, you're going to enter in that data capture page field. So I actually have one called datacapture.htm. So now when I try to enroll in this course, that's the page it would pull up for me to fill out. 
additional info for me to fill out. See, I see a question here. When you have the I and I on or off, is that poor course or across all classes? No, that that's what we talked about. That's a, that's a either it's across the board. If it's on, it shows that way for every course. If it's off, it shows that way. You know, it shows it as a separate page for every course. That's not a course by course option. Okay. All right, Cheryl, it's it's looking a little bit quiet here now. So while you turn the, the controls back over to me, I will remind everybody that um, if you need to review this again or go back and take notes to pause or whatever, we will archive this and we'll have it available within 24 hours on our website in the archive webinars area. So I want to remind everybody that um, we are we have registration open now for conference. You probably saw that in the newsletter. And if you did not get the newsletter, let me know and I'll, I'll help you get signed up for that. But it's open and we have early registration fee available until January 31st. And then to add further to that, if you have a paid support agreement, you do have scholarships available as well and I can let you know what that amount is. It's based on the amount of your support agreement. So take a look at the site on the conference. We do have some topics up. We have some presenter, customer presenters that are, will be sharing their best practices and some of you may have practices you'd like to share as well and I'm happy to get your name on the agenda. So um, let's get you registered for conference watch for the notes in the archive file and with that with if there's no other questions we will call this good for today and we will wish you all a good afternoon and a good weekend thanks everyone for joining us